Um, thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Julia, for the introduction. Um, I'm Eetu Huhta, uh, early stage researcher and doctoral candidate, and I'm going to talk about extending extended collective licensing schemes in Finland. So just a short overview of my presentation today. I'm going to provide some background information to extended collective licenses. Uh, then I'm going to talk about practical implications of ECLs, how they function in practice. And then I'll provide some short reflections on current issues. So the Nordic countries have very long history of cooperating in the legislative area, even prior to uh, European Union cooperation. And our Copyright Act is actually a result of Nordic cooperation. Uh, it's from 1961, but has been amended many times after that. And also as a legislative background, uh, there's a recital in InfoSoc directive uh, that states that this directive is without prejudice to the arrangements in the member states concerning the management of rights, such as extended collective licenses. So uh, basically, in terms of InfoSoc directive, um, collect extended collective licenses would be a management of rights issue, uh, not limitation or ex exception as such, but I'm going to address that a little bit further during my presentation. Uh, so how does this work? What's all the fuss? An ECL is uh, basically a license that may be invoked by users who have an agreement with collective, ma collective management organization or corporate management organization that represents a substantial amount of rights holders of certain types of, of works. So once the user have a, has an agreement with the CMO, the user is able to use works also other than those that are represented by the CMO. Uh, so basically the agreement between these two parties also has an impact on third parties' rights. Uh, um, in this case, those right holders that are unrepresented by the CMO. The idea is to provide legal certainty for the users. Um, so they need not fear of individual claims for compensation from rights holders um, once the agreement is in place. And rights holders, their interest is um, also taken into account by the CMO because right holders may turn directly to CMO for an equitable remuneration. Uh, ECLs have some characteristics of compulsory licensing. It works in a way that these unrepresented right holders are by default not consulted. Uh, their consent is not sought uh, prior to the use of, um, uh, use of copyright protected content um, normally. Uh, um, but in some cases, they may well opt out from licensing, uh, and there's a use in archives and museums exempted in 16D uh, of the Finnish Copyright Act, uh, and there are several other uh, provisions where the right holder may opt out from licensing. Uh, I have short time to talk today, so I won't be able to go through all, all the users, but I wanted to provide, because the Finnish Copyright, uh, Copyright uh, Act contains many cross-references to extend, extended collective licensing, I wanted to provide just an overview of the legislation where what types of users are covered by the ECLs. And mainly broadcasting is a is a huge thing within ECLs and then uh, uses for educational purposes. Uh, so uh, in the prevalent interpretation in national legislation after the InfoSoc directive has been that ECLs are merely an arrangement to manage copyright. 
but if we look ECLs in light of international law, I think we have to consider them, them as limitations because we are limiting the rights holders' uh, right to uh, to uh, license individually, uh, or sometimes also to prohibit the use of a protected content. So in that sense, we would also have to comply with the three-step test. Um, also, I would like to point out, just as a comparison, that unlike our Nordic neighbors, Denmark and Sweden, Finland does not have a general ECL provision, which covers other forms of use. So in Sweden and Denmark, there is a special provision in their copyright acts uh, that can be invoked by the user as a general support. So uh, CMOs and users may agree upon other terms where ECLs can be used uh, and then the legislation provides for the legal basis uh, that the legal system will support this agreement. Uh, but Finland doesn't have that kind of provision. And I would love to talk about extended collective licensing schemes and uh, the CDASM directive, but Finland is still in progress of implementing it. Uh, so I'm afraid that will be a presentation another time. That was all from me for today, and you may uh, contact me through Twitter or LinkedIn or my email. Thank you so much, Etu, also for staying within your time. And I think I'm collecting questions, but I really would enjoy to have the discussion all together after the three presentations. So I'll definitely ask uh, Rita to take over and share the screen if you have any slides. Uh, yes, thank you, Julia. I'll try to share the screen now. Yeah, perfect. We can see it. Let's see if it works. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this um, interesting event. Uh, I was really curious to learn more about, about the recreating project. And so as far as I understand, I have just seven minutes allocated. That's why my intervention will be quite short. So what I want to do with those seven minutes is um, maybe just to ask one question. Well, I will focus only on uh, extend collective licensing for out of commerce works. Uh, and I'll ask a question uh, from the perspective of Lithuania, where, well, where I come from. Well, I'm at the moment Australian, work in Australia, I still kind of try to <laughs> see things from Lithuanian perspective. And I ask, so is it in implementing extend collective licensing for out of commerce works? Is it really worth the effort? So um, uh, thank you for, you to, to giving, uh, for giving us introduction of what extend collective licensing is. So I suppose everyone uh, certainly knows what it is about. And um, uh, we probably also, many of us know that recent, uh, recently adopted digital single market directive um, requires member states now to uh, introduce extended collective licensing for out of commerce works. Sorry about formatting of my slides, something happened when, when um, sharing it. It was not in that bad format. Um, yes, and so Lithuania is currently um, discussing the amendment to Copyright and Related Rights Act uh, which will introduce this extended collecting license for out of commerce works. So I wanted to, to ask two questions in this my brief intervention. Uh, so first of all, where uh, did Lithuanian stakeholders ask for this particular licensing scheme to be introduced with relation to this out of commerce work? So to say, um, did they want it in the first place? And the second question is, will Lithuanian stakeholders benefit from it? And these my questions actually originate from my previous research when I was uh, in a few papers, I was trying to look um, at um, like, like what impact um, or European uh, copyright legislation actually has as opposed to have in, 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 in small essential Eastern European countries like Lithuania. And um, in, in these my previous papers, I found that in many cases, the provisions 
uh, suggested and adopted at European Union level uh, do not really reflect the actual problems in such markets as Lithuania and they stem normally from Western countries and um, that's why when they're implementing the law they often stay as black letter rules and do not really necessarily have the effect that uh, they um, that they were in, you know that they um, that they were intended for so that's why um, I, I wanted to look now uh, what effect uh, this extend collective license for out of commerce works these provisions might have in Lithuania. I should say that I haven't done uh, recently much uh, like detailed research on this topic. So this intervention is based like from my research a few years ago when I talked to stakeholders and recently I also had, uh, had a few conversations with stakeholders. So this, this, this intervention just merely raises questions rather than gives very clear answers. But, but well, let's, let's see what sort of findings I, I, I made from like in my previous research and, and, and what observations I can make now. So did Lithuanian stakeholders ask for it? And so when I looked um, at, um, at European Commission public consultation 2014, I, I, there, there were like um, 503 submissions made. And interestingly, I saw that not a single Lithuanian organization contributed to, to this consultation. So essentially, uh, they, there was, for, for, for a number of different reasons, which I probably won't now discuss, um, the, the, the Lithuanian stakeholders did not, did not participate in that discussion, whether such a licensing scheme is needed. On the other hand, of course, we can't say that they didn't face a problem. Um, mass digitization in libraries is happening. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and they are facing problems on how to clear the rights. So for instance, eClassica project, which is one of the bigger projects that National Library of, uh, of Lithuania uh, was running, uh, was meant to digitize 600 works. And they, they approached initially collecting society to get a license. They didn't get it. And they had to approach each and individual uh, right holder to get, you know, license to digitize their works if they were not orphan works or if they were, you know, if they were still in protecting the copyright. And of course, you would say uh, we need some, you know, legal mechanism maybe to facilitate that. So the, there was, so we can say that, yes, there was a problem. The question is, you know, whether this particular solution was uh, is really the most suitable one, you know, in our, in, our, in Lithuania. So now the next question is, will Lithuanian stakeholders benefit from extended collecting licensing regime applied for out of commerce works, uh, or works um, like when, you, so I have actually, I didn't introduce at the beginning, but this is essentially a, uh, concerns works, uh, out of commerce works that are being digitized in libraries. And um, so here, um, when I talk to some of the for instance, people in libraries, they, uh, and also my previous research, I made a general conclusion that, well, it looks like quite a good and timely solution. It allows libraries possibly to, you know, to, it makes it easier for them to license works and also it is supposed to remunerate right holders. But now I would like to uh, ask this one question, another question here. So um, how much, um, it will cost actually to, to establish and run extensive collecting licensing scheme in Lithuania and whether these costs will really, um, you know, are worthy, keeping in mind how much digitization do we have in such a relatively small market. So let's think about the costs that will be involved in establishing such a scheme in the first place and running it. So first of all, you know, government has to set the rules on how out of commerce status is determined. Right holders have to develop catalogs and databases of in commerce works. Libraries have to run through the process and establish first of all the process and run the process of establishing where particular each and every probably work is out of commerce. Then they have to register that was in natural national database and EU level database. Secondly, then libraries after establishing that particular works are out of commerce, they have to negotiate uh, extended collective licensing with um, uh, collecting societies. So um, this uh, negotiation process might lead to you know, some conflicts and, and, and they, it might be right, redirected to uh, alternative dispute resolution mechanism and collecting societies then, you know, after let's say agreement is settled, they have to have set the entire process how they actually they are going to 
announce this collecting um, extended collecting licensing scheme and inform our right holders that are you know not their members then we have to have processes of how right holders uh, can leave the scheme. So actually, both collecting societies would have to establish that process. Right holders have to follow the you know, news uh, uh, on whether their works are included into the scheme. They have to then ask to be excluded if they don't want the libraries and have to um, you act accordingly. They have to remove authors from, uh, you know, from this list of being to be digitized works or they have to renegotiate individual licenses. And finally, there is also an ent entire process how right holders can revoke out of commerce status, let's say, if if, if publisher decides to republish uh, the work. So, um, uh, so keeping in mind uh, all this co essentially cost, which means like time and, uh, and res uh, human resources, that we that I require to establish the extended collecting licensing for out of commerce works, and we I asked so will actually uh, the cost that libraries are currently experiencing when digitizing works will be decreased. Uh, we have to keep in mind that let's say Lithuania and other small markets are quite uh, are different from let's say Western markets because of like just one difference is because of their size. So the digitization projects are much smaller. So I haven't really st collected the statistics, but um, but actually when I talked to libraries, they asked me one of the first question was, so who, who will actually establish the demand for you know the digitization of, for this out of commerce work? It was a signal that you know maybe you know we we are having some digitization, but it's not thousands and thousands of works every year. Maybe it's a few hundred of works being digitized every year, and out of them. Who knows how many will be out of commerce? So you know, uh, will it? What will be cheaper? Is it asking individual licenses for those? Uh, I don't know. Let's say even a hundred, several hundreds of works every year, according to already established procedure, or will it be cheaper to establish this extended collection scheme and then trying to reduce those you know costs by licensing through this scheme? Also, additional question, uh, to which extent this extent collect collective licensing scheme will benefit uh, right holders and especially you know, authors and creators? Uh, because now libraries are licensing um, works directly from right holders and paying them rem remuneration directly. And now if through this extended collective licensing, a part of revenue will go to collecting societies and, and, and who knows how much right holders would get. So I just wanted um, to raise this in issue, and um, I think it's uh, when when we're talking about when when I remember Professor Dussolier discussion uh, presentation, I'm thinking about this flexibility, you know, to transpose that exception in different countries differently, and I'm wondering, you know, whether you know the requirement for all member states, depend in despite of their size and market size and the, the complexity of their market situation. You know, requirement for all of them to have that extended licensing regime. Um, I don't know if that's really there is sufficient flexibility at the EU level to take into account. You know, different different market situations, different jurisdictions. Thank you, Rita. I was about to remind you it was still within the time of the seven minute. And now, last but not least, I ask Matei to share with us also his short contribution. In yes. screen, if you hello everyone, need. Uh, let me just give a second. Uh, yep, should be working like this. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see me, everybody can hear me. Okay, I'll be working as, 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 as a part of the presentation. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Julia, and thanks uh, uh, for the uh, whole uh, to the whole Recreate team for the amazing work uh, you are doing on the project. Um, so I would like to also uh, quickly share with you, uh, uh, let's say, a brief uh, national case study on uh, uh, how the uh, ECL is being implemented in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, firstly, I would like to, however, talk a bit briefly on uh, the issue of uh, ECL in Czech Republic, then uh, show you what is actually happening with the Digital Single Market Directive uh, implementation, how the uh, ECL is actually working right now, because the Czech Republic was one of the countries that actually uh, took advantage and uh, already introduced uh, this uh, ECL uh, before uh, the actual DSM uh, directive, 
and uh, what is uh, what is uh, being proposed in the uh, transposition. Uh, as regards uh, as to the ECL in Czech Republic, um, uh, interestingly, the Czech Republic has, uh, yeah, I would say, quite a long tradition, uh, almost 20 years of the ECL. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it uh, was not explicitly regulated uh, in the uh, uh, in the law as such. But what was regulated was the actual effect of the cumulative agreements, as uh, they are called, the cumulative agreements uh, that have that have uh, this uh, extended effect. Um, these are uh, basically working on the. Uh, operation they're operating on the uh, basis of a legal present, uh, presumption of representation as was already stated uh, therefore the uh, respective CMOs are actually uh, uh, licensing their whole repertoire and uh, thus uh, also concluding the agreements uh, also for the non-represented authors um, in 2017 uh, with uh, uh, one update of the Czech Copyright Act the um, ECL was explicitly regulated and explicitly also defined uh, in the uh, law uh, copyrighted as such. Uh, of course, opt-outs are still possible, uh, even though there are uh, non-opt-outable uh, non uh, uses of works. This concerns mainly broadcasting, uh, well, playing TVs and radios uh, in, in restaurants and bars, etc. Also, then this might be interesting uh, for the rest of the audience. Um, we had uh, also a specific regulation uh, that was directly related to uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Um, there was actually an amendment of the Czech Copyright Act that was not that systematic, I would say, uh, that introduced the possibility of um, um, making available of the works of communication to the public of the works uh, and um, uh, the reproduction thereof by the public libraries um, if the uh, libraries were closed for two months. However, of course, this possibility was there also before. So this was kind of like, I would say, a bit of a nonsensical uh, amendment, but nevertheless, it's, it's there. As regards uh, to the uh, state of the implementation of the uh, DSM uh, directive in the Czech Republic, uh, now we are in the phase where um, just in a few days the government the legislative council will deliberate on uh, the uh, proposal. This proposal has been uh, discussed with uh, stakeholders, however, um, there were no actual uh, texts available. The first uh, Czech transposition draft was released uh, in uh, the uh, winter of 2020. There was a, a short uh, period of consultation uh, where uh, the uh, respective uh, respective um, um, agencies um, might intervene, uh, various ministries, etc. And uh, now we are actually waiting for uh, the uh, Government Legislative Council to uh, keep their opinion thereon, and then the standard legislative procedure starts. Uh, of course, and I can say that uh, we will not be the, uh, the 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 only country that will miss the obviously will miss the implementation deadline. Uh, the questions actually is we have uh, general elections on in, in October. Uh, so actually the uh, future of the implementation remains, uh, remains unknown. But given the fact that the preferences in uh, Czech Republic is that the uh, pirate party actually may become the uh, reigning party, uh, it will be definitely interesting to see what is going to happen. Uh, so uh, about the um, uh, delegata, that means what we have right now as regards to out of commerce works. Uh, as I already said, uh, the Czech uh, legislator took the opportunity and uh, introduced the uh, possibility of um, license uh, via ECL, uh, the out of commerce works. Uh, however, only literal works and uh, the included visual works. Um, it is uh, being operated by the Czech National Library. Uh, when I was looking at the numbers, uh, they claimed that there are more than 150 uh, works uh, included. Uh, the serials, that means the news, etc., are included up until 2010, and the books are included. Uh, this date was recently expanded up until 2007. Um, 
Uh, here again, of course, as was as was already uh, discussed by Rita, there are uh, various uh, various and uh, very briefly uh, mentioned and also sorry not briefly but uh, very detailed. I'm sorry, um, uh, described uh, the possibilities how the uh, works get on this list, how they can be taken down. So uh, it uh, seems like uh, the, the information is there, it's being provided. Uh, there is also an uh, agreement uh, among, uh, or between the um, Delia, which is the CMO for later works, uh, that is getting the money from a state budget. And this is then uh, being uh, redistributed to the respective, uh, to the respective authors. Uh, what is now being uh, what is now being uh, suggested? Uh, so, firstly, we are the in, in the legal definition of out of commerce work uh, that is uh, basically literally translation of the respective uh, respective directive article. Therefore, the work uh, that is not uh, available through customary channels uh, in good faith. Um, what we have, however, introduced is uh, there are basically two ECL operating uh, next to each other. The old one, the already uh, existing system that has been supplemented by the new system, uh, that has been supplemented by the new system. Um, both of these uh, will be licensed under ECL. Um, both of these have to uh, be uh, the, the information um, must be shared uh, both on the web page as well as on the UIPO uh, portal. Uh, we have also introduced uh, naturally the uh, backup uh, backup um, license. However, uh, that is uh, that is uh, to be. Uh, zeroed out uh, if the ECL is uh, available. It includes all of the subject matter. Uh, however, what is interesting, uh, we have a specific mechanism of how the uh, um, licensing agreements under the ECL regime will be actually, uh, will be actually uh, concluded. And there it is stated, and I hope I read it uh, uh, Correctly, if I didn't see that the performances will not, uh, by the performing artists, will not fall under this system of ECL. Therefore, if the work uh, would, um, or if it be, for example, a uh, recording that will also include the performance, then this must be then uh, sorted out separately. So this is like a brief uh, overview uh, of what is actually coming to Czech Republic. Uh, if it's coming to Czech, Czech Republic, we will see. Uh, what I like the most is, of course, that the Czech national uh, legislature introduced uh, the uh, need that also um, stems from the directive that this system of ECL should be uh, explained to the users uh, and that the uh, collective management societies uh, should be able to explain it, how it works on their web pages. I'm really looking forward to it because uh, as, as you know of, of this one of the most complicated topics uh, ever uh, especially uh, those uh, of you who are trying to teach uh, students uh, the copyright law and the basics of copyright law I try to explain to them how this actually works in practice uh, it is really complicated so I'm really looking forward to how this will all play out and uh, thanks for your attention and if you have any questions of course I'm here Thank you very much, Mate. I indeed appreciate a lot, especially we as panel and US speakers for having to deal within five to seven minutes with probably one of the most complicated and tricky topic. Mate and, I, Mate and I were talking and complaining about how complex it is even for us. So definitely I, I join you in stressing how hard it will be also to reach a fair level of accessibility of the information and transparency from an end user perspective of how the, the system works, even in those countries which uh, will implement Article 8. I am from a member state that so far has expressed his, uh, its intention not to implement uh, Article 8. So we'll, we'll see actually how it goes. And I saw, actually, uh, I saw already two questions in the chat that I will have, uh, we have five minutes, so I will have to squeeze in and 
And I apologize if I will refer in a very short and uh, manner, but I saw Vladimir uh, writing about actually on a on a overlapping uh, panel question. So uh, referring to the digital copies of books in libraries and uh, envisioning probably the possibility of having a broader scope of what a user can do once he or she enters a library and the library, which I think Vladimir referred to as a library cooperative, so envisioning a public and private role in it, then having the possibility of having digital copies of full books, what I, I think I understood, for private uses, whether actually licensing and the role of libraries in ensuring fair remuneration could be something probably favorable and and good for our future in EU digital copyright. And then I saw Victor referring, actually expressing a favorable approach towards uh, ECLs vis-a-vis -vis user generated content. So we are fully in the online zone. And again, um, proposing that platforms could actually rely more on collecting societies to seek licenses uh, in order to have a, probably a smoother flow of information and content uh, online. Ha, I would ask the three of you to briefly comment on these two insights. And then if we have time, I would have uh, one further question from my side to you all. I think you can also read the longer version of the comments, I would say more than questions in the chat. If any one of you has to has something to respond. Well, maybe I can do, make a few comments since it was not really a question rather mm -hmm. a comment. So maybe I'll just add a few com comments. And yeah, I, I could have, I could of course not agree that, you know, I could, I, I should agree that did, uh, making sh that uh, making sure that libraries provide digital content to users is certainly very important. And I think we have to think of two types of content. One con one type of content is that ebooks that libraries buy, and then you can get access to them online. Another type of content is that the book libraries digitize the um, printed books that they have, and then provide them. Um, this content, you know, and make available online to users. And I think it's it, uh, the, the COVID situation and all lockdowns kind of demonstrated, you know, probably made it more, uh, created more need for such sort of digital content and access to digital content, not only in library, but uh, from home. And so I think that uh, when I'm just quickly now thinking, I think we have like, legal regime for both of these types of uses. So, you know, e-lending, we have e-lending uh, uh, rules that, that, that suggest that whenever e-books are being lended by libraries, authors are supposed, supposed to be remunerated. And we also have, uh, digi when we libraries want to digitize books and make them available, that's exactly extended collective licensing and also Orphan Works directive that would apply in this situation and essentially libraries have to get permission from right holders and, um, and, and pay remuneration to right holders uh, for, for such uses is, of course, um, yeah, the, the question is still to be seen, you know, how this provision will be implemented and how effective they'll be in nas at national level. But I think we are, we are, we are you know, um, having some work done already in that regard and hopefully libraries soon um, kind of, um, it will be easier for them to, to make more digital works available to audiences. Thanks, Rita. Matei, oh, I see you unmuted yourself. Uh, no, I just collect like 40 seconds to react uh, uh, as regards to uh, Victor. This is really an interesting uh, question, remark, comment. But uh, in my opinion, this clashes with the uh, Article 17 uh, subparagraph or paragraph 2, where the acts of the user should be covered by the uh, license that the uh, that the right holder, oh, sorry, that the uh, platform has obtained. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. What I can do in the 10 seconds <laughs> for another <laughs> speak. Close. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I start thanking you all for, for your contribution. 